It's been an interesting year for the horror genre so far. But if this year has taught us anything, it's that the legacy horror trend has run its course. It's time for these old franchises to step aside and allow for new and fresh ideas to take center stage. Let's discuss. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So while I was on vacation, I came across this article from Screen Rant that talked about Halloween ends 80% drop in its second week at the box office. Now a lot of defenders are coming out of the woodwork and making a lot of excuses for why this movie is underperforming. Some blame the decision to release this movie on streaming just days after its theatrical release. While I'm sure that is a factor, I think the fact that it was released on streaming says a lot about the studio's lack of confidence in the movie from the very beginning. That makes sense. If you notice, three out of the four major legacy horror sequels or reboots that came out this year made quick or immediate jumps to streaming services. I've said many times before, and I'll say it again here, that streaming releases for major franchises are quickly becoming the new straight-to-DVD format. If for no other reason, we can see a severe dip in quality for these new films. And that's what makes them feel more like content to justify a price point than they do people trying to actually create something memorable. That's right, it stinks! And both the Netflix Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Hulu Hellraiser are very good examples of that. Both of those movies felt like they were simply cashing in on a recognizable name. And not truly trying to restore these franchises to their former glory, like the legacy sequel or reboot is supposed to be doing. No shit. Texas Chainsaw was devoid of the atmosphere and tension that the initial franchise was built on. I mean, they had jokes in this movie about Leatherface getting canceled, for Christ's sake. That's the type of modernization I just don't want in my movies. And then you have Hellraiser, which admittedly wasn't as egregious, but it just simply felt unimaginative and dull to the point that it was difficult for me to find a reason while watching it to justify its existence. We ain't found shit! Both of these movies, as well as Halloween Ends, felt like they were put on streaming services because deep down the studios knew that there wasn't a high demand for these movies in the first place. Plus, you can always mask or fudge the numbers on a streaming service to make this movie look profitable. It should also be noted that streaming numbers don't really hold a lot of weight with me personally because half the time you get the impression that people are just watching these things simply because they are available to them and not because they actually want to see them. It's a convenient thing more than anything, so I really don't think that the quality of these movies matter all that much to most of the people who are watching them. That is one big pile of shit. But streaming isn't the only excuse being used for why Halloween ends as underperforming. The other reason being thrown about is bad word of mouth thanks to negative reactions. Now this one's kind of self-explanatory and of the filmmaker's own doing, or maybe in Halloween End's case, the studio's own doing for how they marketed it. You don't know how many times I've heard over the past few weeks that people simply don't like Halloween Ends because it strayed too far away from the formula and dared to be something different. When you say things like that, it's basically placing blame on the fandom. Something that another popular legacy sequel did earlier this year. I'm looking at you, Scream 5. The truth is, is that you can say whatever you want and make excuses about toxic fans. But the real problem here is that a lot of these fans that you call toxic know more about these franchises than the people who are now creating movies for them. Man, I'm tired of being right. Apologists try to sell everyone on the idea that Halloween ends as a fresh take and everyone should embrace it for that. But in reality, if you actually think about it for a moment, this movie, as well as the previous two movies in this new trilogy, actually stole from a lot of other movies that Hollywood would like us to forget about. They stole concepts from other Halloween movies that were erased from the timeline, and even Friday the 13th movies that some people like to call garbage. Stealing ideas and passing them off as original is what Halloween Ends did, and that simply was just not that satisfying to hardcore fans. Fuck me, right? And you know what? That's not hardcore fans' fault. It's the filmmakers and the studio's job to tell a story that is universally appealing to everyone. So you have no one to blame for your bad word of mouth except for yourselves. Regardless of what Scream 5 tried to preach to us earlier this year, the reality is, is that without hardcore fans' support, 
there would be no movies. There would be no franchises. But damn right. That's the only way I work, Cap. People watch Halloween movies to see Michael Myers, not to see his replacement. People watch Scream movies to see Ghostface, and to see clever commentary about horror cliches, not to get lectured and to get called toxic for being too critical. When modern filmmakers don't have a clear understanding of why people go to see these movies, eventually it will result in people checking out of those franchises, regardless of how much of a fan they are. I don't care! I'd also like to point out that when you compare the 80% drop in Halloween and second week to a movie like Smile's 22% drop in its second week, I think the real issue becomes very clear. When it comes right down to it, people just aren't as interested in these legacy characters and franchises anymore. Because at this point, it's all very been there, done that. Maybe there is nothing new you can add to these franchises that make them more interesting. And they're just meant to exist in the times they were created in and should be left to do so. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. If you notice, the hype for legacy sequels and reboots quickly dies out about a day or two after the movie comes out. Because there typically isn't much to talk about once that initial screening happens. But now what we're seeing is the more original, independent horror movies having more lasting power. Movies like Pearl, or X, or Barbarian, or Smile, or yes, even Terrifier 2. They have all had considerably better buzz surrounding them because those movies feel fresh and they don't have the baggage attached to them that these legacy franchises do. Because it's all part of the plan. I'm honestly a bit encouraged by the responses to these movies. Because maybe the general public is finally starting to see the value of original stories. I will always love the classic franchises, and those movies will always be there whenever I want to relive them. But we really need to stop trying to reinvent them, and stop trying to introduce them to a new generation, and instead focus on giving the new generation its own iconic stories that they can be inspired by. Or we can just keep ruining beloved franchises with sequels and reboots that nobody asked for. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up hill. The choice is yours, Hollywood, but I think fans are telling you exactly what they want. All you have to do is stop being so fucking hard-headed and listen to them for once. Because if you do, you might actually learn something. Y'all be cool. Got on.